All right, welcome back to the channel. Let's look at uh, Linux today. Um, I've been watching these uh, these news articles about uh, Microsoft, you know, with its uh, recall feature that's going to be on those uh, AI-powered uh, laptops, for, you know, with the Qualcomm chips in it. And uh, it got me thinking about um, about privacy again. You know, it wasn't all that long ago. Well, it's been years, but it wasn't all that long ago. I went on a whole de-Google kick on my phone. Um, that didn't actually end up very well for me, so I just went back to, you know, the standard thing that everybody has. But, um, you know, is Linux the cure-all for this? Um, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of misinformation about Linux out there. I mean, you can literally go in blind. You could watch a dozen Linux videos on YouTube and you can be literally stupider than the moment you started, right? Let's just take an introductory look into what Linux actually is. What can it do for you? All right, so in the nutshell, it's an operating system. That's all it is. Just like Windows is an operating system, just like Mac OS is an operating system, Android's an operating system, iOS is an operating system. I mean, that's that's the core. That's what it is, right? Uh, you know, you you can you can watch uh, videos where you know Linux can slice and dice and julian fry and cure cancer, and you know it goes on and on and on, right? But at the end of the day, it's an operating system. It's open source, which is what I like about it, right? So there are people out there who are way smarter than all of us, guarantee it. And uh, they're able to, you know, if they're qualified and have the knowledge, they can look at the code, they can find things. Um, if, if, if somebody was to try to sneak something fancy or nefarious into a, into a Linux build that's open source, you better bet someone's going to find it, right? And, and that's the thing with, uh, you know, Microsoft, um, you know, Android, or Google, whatever, um, and uh, Mac OS is, uh, that's proprietary, that's closed. You're not looking at nothing, right? There's no, there's no source code being looked at. So I have a couple of videos on the channel um, already where I've, I've installed Linux. Um, I typically go with Linux Mint. Um, you know, over the years... I, th I think it was probably mid nineties. It was a red hat of a uh, version of some sort. So whatever was out in like 95, 96, something like that was the first version of Linux I ever tried. Um, and I've tried a lot of Linux distros over the years, but I always come back to Linux mint. Um, before that it was Ubuntu. Um, you know, I was, yeah, I was one of those dudes. I was a Ubuntu fanboy. I was running around screaming off the top of roofs about Ubuntu. I don't really do that anymore. Um, Linux isn't special, honestly. It's just an operating system, but, uh, I love Linux Mint. I don't know. It's just something about it. The look, the feel, um, maybe it's, you know, like I'm more used to, um, Debian based OSs. Maybe that's why I, I go back to Linux Mint. So, you know, uh, Ubuntu, which uh, Linux Mint is based off of, Ubuntu is, is uh, you know, based off of Debian or Debian, whatever you want to say. Um, and I, I don't know, I, f I feel like when I'm working in the terminal, this, this is what I, you know, this is what I'm comfortable with are these types of Linux distributions. But anyway, yeah, I'm rambling. Let's um, let's go over a Linux Mint installation, and maybe while we're we're doing that, we'll just have a little. Well, we won't have a discussion because you can't talk back to me. But um, you know, in the comments, you can. Let's let's go over like maybe some pros and cons of Linux and what what can it actually do for you. Okay. Uh, let's just get an installation going. Um, I am just, just for ease of making this video, I'm going to use a, a virtual machine. Honestly, like if we were going to do this real world on a, on a piece of hardware, like a laptop or a desktop or whatever, 
it's slightly the mechanics are slightly different like i'd be using a flash drive instead of an iso file but uh, for all intents and purposes it's the same thing so uh yeah let's just uh let's just add a machine oops yeah let's go new sorry and i'll just call this uh linux mint and that is not how you spell linux sorry the microphone is right over top my keyboard and i can't see um we're gonna do uh obviously linux and ubuntu 64-bit is good enough and then we'll select an iso image that's on my desktop and let's click next and i'll put the guest add-ons that's going to be useful for later okay uh i'm gonna just give it like eight gigs of ram so what is that 81 92 something like that and i'll just give it half my cores and then we'll click finish okay and then let's uh, let's power this machine on so this is our linux mint um sort of like the boot screen right this is what you first see um it'll count down and, and it'll do the first option so we're just going to start linux mint right so this is the sort of the well this is your this is what it boots to this is your desktop right uh you will install linux mint using this uh shortcut um but you know it's a fully functional os right now so what is linux good for and that's a good question because i think that would be something that uh that a beginner would ask like why why who cares why do I need Linux? What would be what would it be good for? Or what can it do for me? Uh, so this I would say the easiest, the low hanging fruit here for this question is uh, old hardware, and Linux distros of of uh, you know all flavors, they really shine on old hardware. Uh, again, I've got a couple of videos on the channel already where I've installed Linux on some old hardware, right? like, you know, some old MacBooks for one, um, Linux, Linux mint on a, on a MacBook is awesome. And Linux mint on an iMac is awesome. Okay. So this is, you know, most of these installers, um, pretty much ask the same kind of questions. You know, Windows, Mac OS, the same thing. They ask you your language and all that stuff, right? So it's there's nothing difficult about the questions that are asked here. So yeah, I want English and we'll click continue. Um, I am Canadian, but I prefer to use a, a US keyboard because that's pretty much what we use here. Unless you're French Canadian and we'll click continue. You install the multimedia codex. I typically do. Um, so I'll just do that. Uh, you can see down here, I do have a network connection in this VM, right? So that's fine. Cause you'll, you'll need that for the, uh, multimedia codex. Okay. So this here, just a little, a little history. It wasn't that long ago that, uh, partitioning or setting up your drive to get Linux installed you know, from, from a layman's point of view or someone who doesn't know Linux, it's like you, you need to have a freaking PhD to get this done. Nowadays, uh, it's, it's stupid simple. Um, in this case, in this example that we're doing right now, uh, I have a, just w what would be considered a blank hard drive, okay, in this VM. I'm literally just going to choose the first option, just erase the disk and install uh, Linux. You could do something else. And when you click continue, there'll be some options, right? So if it detects another OS, you can have one of the options is you could, you could keep the old OS and you could have it, um, automatically resize the drive and you would install Linux mint or whatever distribution you're using alongside that other OS. And then you would have a dual boot and there's a couple other options in there as well. But in this uh, example, we're just going to erase the entire hard drive and we'll click install now. This is just telling you uh, what's going to happen to your storage device, right? That's all this is. Um, 
it's basically stating that, you know, this is the device that, that it's using and here's what's going to happen to it. Okay. That's all that is. Uh, time zone, Edmonton's not my city, but this is my time zone. So that's fine. We'll just do that. So we'll just give ourselves a username and, uh, oops, that's not the tab key. And we'll give ourselves a super secret password. I am going to choose to log this in automatically. Um, that's not necessarily a good thing. Like if you're worried about security, uh, you don't want to have your OS log in by itself. I mean, it's not that, you know, it's some grand security to have it sit on a login screen, but you know what I mean. And then you also could encrypt your home folder. Uh, I don't need to do that, so I'll just click continue. And basically, that's it. Um, Linux is now installing. You can watch the uh, slideshow and read some things about what they have to say. You can also expand this um, sort of verbose output, and you can watch what's happening. There's not really much to see there if you don't know what it's doing. And quite frankly, it's boring anyway, so there you go. All right, I will come back once the uh, installation is complete. Okay, here we go. Uh, installation is complete, so let's just uh, click restart now. Okay, here we go. We're back. Uh, this is your welcome screen. Uh, you can click through this. So there's, a, there's some things you can do in here. Let's just make this bigger. If you were on real hardware, uh, you probably would want to go and check your driver manager out. Uh, I'll click it here in this VM. It probably won't do anything like it won't show anything. Um, but you know, if you had like a graphics card, uh, installed in your, in your machine, uh, let's say you had a, uh, Nvidia card, it would probably show you a list of drivers that you could use and you could pick like the newest driver as an example. And that would, that would get the, uh, graphics card drivers installed and you would probably want to do that i, th I think out of box it uses this uh, nouveau driver which honestly if you're just using if you're just doing like standard everyday desktop tasks that driver is probably good enough for you but if you wanted to do some gaming you might want to have the proprietary nvidia driver um, i could be wrong about um ati and uh or AMD, I guess <laughs> you can, you can tell my age. I call it ATI still, uh, let me know in the comments below, but I think that the, uh, there's kernel level driver support for AMD graphics cards. Um, at least that's how I remember it. But any, again, if you know, uh, bleep, bloop it down in the comments there. I'd, I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. So we don't really need this open. We can close this. So. There you go. You have, you have Linux Mint installed. Now what? <laughs> right? So, uh, I don't know. Let's do a couple of things. Let's go to, um, YouTube as an example. We'll, we'll just kind of like simulate some real world things that you would do with, uh, with your OS, right? So we can go to, I don't know, let's just go to like, uh, Dalwit, David, Dalwit does tech stuff. I love this guy. Okay. So there's his newest video. Uh, Dawid, I hope you don't mind that I'm using you as a guinea pig. So here we go. It's playing. Uh, let's put it on uh, 1080p make it full screen and you know we're in a we're in a vm and uh let me just turn this down in case it's actually coming through we're in a vm we're playing a 1080p youtube video you know in linux and it's looking like it's playing just fine um and also side note if you don't know this guy go go watch his stuff he's freaking hilarious i like his content and uh he's canadian so props shout out to the canadian guys okay so there you go there's there's that um let's say you wanted to um do email as an example right so 
you can go to uh, say Thunderbird Mail, which is built in. Uh, Thunderbird Mail is freaking awesome. So let's let's add um, let's add an email account, right? So uh, what I'll do is uh, just off camera, real quick. I'm just going to create just a generic uh, Google account, okay? And we'll set it up, right? So one sec. Let's uh, let's do um, let's do an email setup, and we'll allow that. Okay, and finish. Okay, so like you know, here you go. Here's here's uh, Thunderbird mail client, and um, it's sign it's signed in to the to whatever you know. It doesn't matter if it's Gmail or or some ISP email or whatever, right? Hotmail, G, uh, Yahoo, whatever. You've got it. That's working. Um, and, you know, of course, we saw that, uh, you know, you can browse the, the web. You can do internet-related things. Um, you also have uh, LibreOffice. And, uh, you know, LibreOffice, OpenOffice, whatever. Um, they are different, but they're similar they're open source uh office product suites and they work awesome right so you have this functionality right out of the right out of the box so you can open up um office writer you know which is we'll just say word right so there you go you've got your you've got your LibreOffice writer you know you can test words etc Oops, that's not how you spell test, right? So um, we can close this update manager. Thank you for popping up right in the middle of my video. And, uh, you know, LibreOffice and, uh, and OpenOffice, I believe they're fully, for the most part, fully compatible with the Microsoft Office suite. So if I was to do a save as uh, OpenOffice, uh, open document format is the, uh, is the, is the default. Um, but you can see, like, I could, I can save it as a, as a DOCX, like, you know, the new format and you can save and open those formats. Right. So it's totally fine. And, um, so if, if you're, if your goal is to get an operating system that's usable, where you can browse the internet, you can watch YouTube videos, you can send, receive emails, etc. Linux is for you. Okay, let's that's that's it. It just is. Um, if you want to add the layer of worry about uh, having an operating system that's literally an advertising platform, like the new Microsoft Windows, you know, Windows 10, Windows 11. Um, literally, it's it's a it's a freaking advertising platform designed to target you. Okay. That's what it is that it's, it's a, it's an advertising platform in the guise of an operating system, not to mention, you know, the data collection that's going on. Um, and I get it. I mean, they need data. Sure. Why not? I mean, that's their business model, but you know, what are we getting out of it? at the end of the day i mean really what are we getting out of it even android oh you're getting the, all these apps that are free and you know it makes your life easy and blah 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 you know what honestly bugger off <laughs> I, mean, I really that's what i have to say about that you're you're literally making billions off the backs of people who are ignorant or duped into using your products right so Linux can definitely help for that. You know, is there telemetry in Linux? I'm sure there is, right? Um, but, you know, I haven't seen one pop-up ad, ad uh, you know, trying to sell me something, you know, ever in Linux. And um, it's, just, it's just an operating system that, that you use, that you control. You can customize it to your heart's content, um, you know, if you take a deep dive into Linux and, and you know, you, you, you have some years of experience and, and you're, you know, you understand it and you're good at it. 
you could literally build a Linux uh, distro from the ground up. There's there's uh, there's Linux distributions out there that will let you do that. You can pick and choose what apps you want, you know, what functionality you want, and you could tailor it to fit your needs, and it would do exactly what you wanted it to do, right? So, okay, we've we've browsed the. Um, you know, we've browsed the internet, we've looked at YouTube, we've, we've set up an email, um, client. Um, so what else have we got in here? Right. So there's, there's, you know, some of the standard things that most OSs would have. You've got, you know, your drawing and your pictures and all that calculator. You can go and look at your disks. Uh, you've obviously got a file manager, right? So I always prefer the details view. That's just what kind of guy I am. And this is no different, honestly, at the end of the day, the, the, the user interface might look different or might have some variations, but, you know, a file manager is a file manager is a file manager, right? You're going to go look at your files and do things with your files, you know, just like you would in Windows and, and Mac OS. Um, you know, you've got some administration stuff. There's that driver manager we were looking at before. Here's your software manager. Okay. So you can, you can come here and you can find and install software. You can also go to your terminal and you can find and install soft. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say find. I mean, you're, you're going to be knowing what you're installing when you come here, but you can install software, uh, with the terminal. And uh, actually, this is a good point to pause uh, looking at this, this OS for a second and talk about the terminal. Uh, I have had conversations with people about Linux, and I have had people mention that the terminal, as soon as there's anything terminal related, they're done. They don't want to do it anymore. Uh, it, it, it's BS, you know, all, all the arguments against the terminal. Um, there's a terminal in every freaking OS, first of all. It's not just Linux. You can open a command prompt in, in Windows. You can open up uh, a terminal in, in Mac OS. You can open up a terminal in, in Android. It, it doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, the point I'm trying to make here is that you can literally use Linux and never, ever open up the terminal. It is absolutely possible. If you don't want to have the terminal... Don't open the terminal. It's simple as that. You can go to Software Manager here. You can you can search um, what they have to offer. You can also um, add other uh, software repositories. Uh, I think they're called PPAs. Uh, go ahead and comment below if I've got that right or wrong. But anyway, you can add other software repositories to to give you access to more software. So, you know, just off the top, you know, some people like Discord, right? There it is. Just click install. And it, it'll tell you that it needs some additional software. That's fine. You know, let it do its thing. It, it'll install Discord. Um, for the most part, um, uh, from my previous experience, and this is years ago, Gone are the days of installing a piece of software and then not having it show up in here. Uh, now, is it perfect? No, not at all. Um, in the last video I just did, I installed uh, RetroPie and I came here looking for it and it wasn't there. Um, and then all I literally did was reboot and I didn't reboot because it wasn't there. It was just a, a reboot I needed to do. And when I came back, the entry was there, right? So yeah, okay, there could be there could be some uh, little glitches here or there. Whether or not that's a glitch or a fault, I don't know. But uh, anyhow, let's let this finish installing. Okay, the installation's done. I could launch it from here and it'll do its updates. Let's actually see if it did make it into, uh, yeah, it did. So there, there we go under internet, there's discord, right? So there's your, there's your start, start menu. Oh, I'm so ingrained into windows. There's your, uh, programs menu entry. <laughs> it's a D Microsoft it 
Okay, so here you go. You could sign into Discord, so but we don't need that. And we could, you know, again, you can you can search for stuff. Uh, for instance, you might want Steam. Believe it or not, um, gaming on Linux is not uh, gaming on Windows. I'm just going to put that out there. You're not going to be playing AAA titles. You know, you're not going to put Call of Duty on Linux and be playing that. You're not going to be, you know, doing whatever, whatever it is that you want. Um, there are uh, lots and lots of games that will play on Linux. Uh, there's also, you know, fairly modern stuff um, that that have um, that have anti-cheat that that are compatible with Linux that you can install on Linux. And as a matter of fact, you know, Steam has a, has a, a compatibility layer called Proton, which is pretty good. And you can, you can install some, some pretty modern stuff on Steam. And then of course you can also, uh, you can also just have uh, pure Linux versions of games installed through Steam. So I'm going to actually install Steam because I want to look at this later in the video. And uh, so, you know, if you're, if you're a light gamer and you, and you don't play the most current modern AAA titles, you know, uh, Linux, some Linux distribution might be perfectly fine for you. All right. So Steam is installed and... Uh, you know, my library is mostly um, Windows games for the most part. But uh, what you can do under the Steam settings, under compatibility, is you can turn on Steam Play for all other titles. And uh, that will sort of activate your uh, Steam Proton. Um I won't be able to do anything on this VM. There's no graphics card, so there's no point in even trying to fire anything up. Um, but that is an option. And what you can do is if you go to the uh, protondatabase.com uh, and you do a search for a particular Windows game that you want. Uh, for instance, like I play DayZ a lot. Um, DayZ is still a really popular game. Uh, when you look up the the stats for for Daisy, uh, as far as player base, it's still in the millions of players per month that are playing um, Daisy. So that's quite a lot, right? Uh, so we get a gold status on the Proton DB. Um, you know, I think the uh, I think the I think the highest is platinum. And you can, you can see games when you search, whether they're borked or whatever, right? But, you know, I think gold and up is pretty good. And uh, I have played DayZ on Linux before, um, and it does work just fine. So, you know, your results will vary when you search for whatever game you play, um, whether or not it's supported with the Proton um, compatibility layer or not. So that's Steam. Uh, you can also... Uh, just go to your um, so you can go to your uh, software manager and then so if you were looking specifically for games you could click the games section these these will be uh, like native Linux clients or native Linux games I should say and you can have a look around and there's tons and tons of stuff in here that you can find and install and have fun with, right? Tons of stuff. So that would be, that would be games. Uh, obviously if I was on real hardware, I could, I could probably do some, some actual real world testing, but, uh, without an actual GPU in this, you know, GPU support, like this VM obviously doesn't have that. Without that, it's kind of pointless because, you know, you'd be looking at a slideshow even if even if it did open. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Um, I think that's probably good enough for just an initial uh, cursory look at Linux and what can it do for you and why should you even care about it. Um, it is a it is a robust OS. 
uh, it'll do it'll do everything that you need to do if you're a normal everyday computer user. It's free. It doesn't track you. It doesn't serve advertisements up to you. And if you pick the right Linux distribution, you can you can have yourself a really nice looking desktop. You can customize it. You can do whatever you want with it. And uh, I think you I think once you got into it and and found what suits your fancy as far as the distros out there, because there's tons, tons and tons of distros. I, I'm only using Linux Mint or Ubuntu or whatever as as an example, is because it's what I like to use. But uh, you know your 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 mileage will vary, obviously, depending on what what's what uh, your tastes and preferences are. All right, uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and comment. Thank you very much. That would be awesome, and we will see you in the next one.